The image we have of the straight razor on the American Western frontier, the men that used them, and how they were used, comes to us mainly from movies and television. The outlaw coming into the wild, dusty town and finding the rickety barber shop. The barber, his hands mildly shaking as he shaves the desperado, hoping he doesn't do something to offend and become another victim of the vicious killer. There's also a common belief that most men didn't shave themselves with a razor back then because it was too difficult. It was easier to make a trip to the barber once a week for a shave before church. Presidents were even lauded for being able to shave themselves with a straight razor. And that's the way it was. Or was it? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a rebuttal in the form of two legendary Western figures. At times, outlaws both, and both were known to make their living as gamblers. Both walked on the side of the law, but knew how to cross that line when pushed. I give you Wild Bill, James Butler Hickok, and John Henry, Doc Holliday, Masters of the Gun, the Card Deck, and the Straight Razor. Both men roamed the same areas of the West, but Hickok's adventures predated Holliday's by a number of years. When Wild Bill was killed in Deadwood in 1876, he was in failing health and at the literal end of his career. Doc Holliday was young and only three years out of the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery, but he had already developed the symptoms of tuberculosis, a disease that would radically alter his life. To help with his ailment, he went west to drier climates and by 1876 had adopted many of the habits of the frontier sharp and was traveling the west, making his way as a gambler and occasionally practicing dentistry. These two men had many things in common. Both were taught at a young age how to shoot and were good with a smoke wagon, a skill that often led to deadly consequences for the unsuspecting drunk or rowdy cowboy that crossed their path. Hickok's favorite was this, the Colt 1851 model Navy cap and ball revolver. Coincidentally, John Holliday was given the exact same model gun as a gift from his father. When both died, they didn't have much left in the way of personal possessions but what they did have was their own personal straight razors. It was reported on his death in 1887 that John Holliday had a few odd items of clothing, a diamond stick pin with a diamond missing, some toiletries, and his Sheffield made razor. Amazingly, these were passed down and are still owned by the family. I tried contacting the family to see if I could get any information about who made the razor or what other toiletries there may have been. Yes, I do want to know what kind of aftershave Doc Holliday used, but I was unsuccessful. Bill Hickok's razor, which we see here, was returned to his family after his death. It's a bone-scaled John Pierce razor with inlaid decoration. It was sold at auction recently for over $10,000. So now we have a picture of two Western legends living a fairly vagabond life, traveling from one boom town to the next, facing lawlessness, and trying to make a living mainly by their wits. Obviously they had good hand-eye coordination, but they also knew how to keep their blades sharp and how to handle a straight razor. No trip to the barbershop for these two, and in the end, it was all they had left, and the most personal of their personal possessions. I was lucky enough to have recently purchased a John Pierce razor very similar to Bill Hickok's. This is mine. It looks like it might be a little earlier due to the blade shape, but as you can see, the scales look to be done by the same workman, so we have a rare opportunity to experience a shave as Wild Bill did. Okay, so here we are going to test out the John Pierce razor that's similar to Bill Hickok's. And the first thing I noticed about it is how kind of dainty it is. The uh, workmanship on it is very fine. The little pin inlays here, which is surprising because you wouldn't think of that with uh, Wild Bill. That would have a kind of a dainty razor. But uh, let's, let's give it a shot. Okay, the first thing I notice is it feels like, like old steel. And what I mean by that is steel from around uh, 
1830, 1840. I don't know how old this razor is. Uh, the shape of it is a little uh, older than uh, Hickox. But it has that really soft feel to it when you shave with it. The other thing about it that's interesting is the scales, these bone scales are very light. So uh, it's kind of uh, heavy weighted on the blade. But I love that feel of that really old steel. This is a, it's not a complete wedge. It's almost a complete wedge. But yeah, this this is going to be a really nice razor to have in the rotation. It's got a great feel to it. Kudos to Wild Bill for his choice of razors. So thanks for coming along with us on this exploration of the straight razor in the American West. And I think that uh, Wild Bill and uh, Doc Holliday would be very surprised that over a hundred years later we'd be talking about their straight razors. I don't think they would have ever th thought that would have been a thing. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>